Hello there, good evening and a warm welcome to the news live on Rupuani Channel I. I'm Sharon Maskunas. And I'm Deshaun Wirakon and we start off by taking a look at your headlines for tonight. Work on the second stage in the Colombo Harbour Eastern Terminal begins. The Governor of the Central Bank predicts of an economic growth rate exceeding 5% this year. Sri Lanka is in the third place among countries engaged in the most successful vaccination programs. Gasser notification relating to the standards of gas, gas cylinders and equipment has been released. Construction of the Kohuwala flyover commences. Now for those and other stories in detail, starting off with local news. The biggest development project in the history of Sri Lankan ports was officially inaugurated today. This was the commencement of the constructions in the second stage in the eastern terminal of the Colombo Harbour. President Gotabe Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa presided over the event. The President and the Prime Minister have unveiled the plaque, symbolizing the inauguration of the construction of the terminal. Thereafter, President Gotabe Rajapaksa has given the signal on the commencement of work. Later on, the President and the Prime Minister have focused attention on project planning. It was only after the completion of these events that the President and the Prime Minister have arrived to participate in the ceremony to commence work in the Colombo Harbour Eastern Terminal, which is to be elevated to the status of Marine Hub of Prosperity. The Mahasangha, clergymen of other religions, Minister Rohita Begunavardhana and other people's representative, foreign ambassadors and state officials have also participated. Minister Rohita Begunavardhana said that according to international grading, the Colombo Harbour is in the 23rd position. The minister has given a pledge to the President and the Prime Minister on this occasion that by the seventh month in the year 2024, the Eastern Terminal would, be, would become a fully-fledged terminal complex. Minister Begunavardhana further said that work in the Western Terminal is also scheduled to commence in February of this year. The golden era in the Colombo Harbour had dawned during the period of 2005-2015. This period had witnessed the commencement of a massive development projects to expand the Colombo Harbour under the Mind the Chintana policy statement. Accordingly, constructions in the 6.8 km long second break water dam had commenced in the year 2008. It took 37 years for the English colonial administration to complete the building of the first breakwater. However, the then government had completed the construction of the second breakwater within a period as short as four years. The first phase of the development project had dealt with the extension of the Jayabahalum terminal. In addition, the port authority was able to fully complete construction of the southern terminal. At present, the southern terminal, known as the CICT, is being managed in joint collaboration of the Colombo Port Authority and other partner company. The southern terminal is equipped with facilities to handle any large vessel in the world. However, the eastern terminal is regarded as the most significant section of the harbour. The total length of this terminal is 1,320 metres. Under the first stage of the project, constructions have been carried out in 600 metres. The depth of the pool is between 18 to 20 metres. Construction of 720 metres is to be conducted under the second stage. The depth in the pool in this section is also between 18 to 20 metres. The overall estimated cost is 40 billion rupees. Six cranes being operated from a ship to the shore are able to control high-tech 20 gantry type cranes which move on rail tracks. The Axis Engineering PLC and the China Harbour Engineering Company are in charge of the constructions to fulfil the main objective of the government to transform Sri Lanka into a marine hub of prosperity. 
Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa said it was the government that came into power in 2005 that had decided to build a new harbour in the country after the independent. The Prime Minister has recalled that work had commenced on the construction of the Hambantara Harbour at a time when the country was engaged in war with the most brutal terrorists in the world. He also said that at that time massive criticisms had been levelled against the construction of the Hambantara port. The Prime Minister further said that not only the Hambantara Harbour but also the southern terminal of the Colombo Harbour was also constructed. The Prime Minister also said during the period of the government expressways, airports and many other founds of massive development projects have been completed. The Prime Minister further said that the government came into power after their period of administration had sold the Hambantara Harbour. He has requested the people to remember what had happened to the country after the year 2015. He also requested the people not to lose hope for the future. In the meantime, the governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Ajit Nivad Kabral, says that Sri Lanka will be able to record an economic growth rate exceeding 5% this year. Now, addressing a media briefing at the auditorium of the Department of Government Information today, he further said that a systematic program is to be implemented to achieve this objective. I think so many people are claiming that the finance and economy in the country is failing. And even the international media reports that in the year 2022, that we would go bankrupt. This story about going bankrupt has been there from 2020 onwards. You ask the same people, international as well as national, what they were saying in 2020. In 2021, they said the same thing. They said 2021, you wouldn't be able to settle your debts, you will fail. And then that also didn't happen. Then 2021, they went to the extent of saying that we have reserves at very low levels and therefore you, sh you won't be able to pay the debt. $500 million is the international sovereign bond that we have to make payment. We have very categorically stated that we have earmarked the funds for that and that we will make the payment. Our currency swaps not a form of debt? Yes, it is a form of debt. That's why I said debt restructuring has this as a part of it. That's what some people are trying to make out, that currency swap, something frightening and all that. No, it's not. We are replacing one type of debt with another because we had gone into international sovereign bonds far in excess of our capacity. So if that is the case, we have to change that. Are we to still say, no, no, we'll wait for another 10 years to do that? No, we have to change that. So through that type of a process, we are now adjusting our debt profile. Governor, Sri Lanka's inflation hit 12.1 in the last year. We know that. And it is not sustainable. Uh, what is uh, the central bank's plan to reduce this? Now, as you know, uh, Sri Lanka is not the only country that is now grappling with this uh, inflation. U.S. is having the highest inflation ever in, 30, uh, in 40 years. So is England. So is so many countries in Europe. So what we are seeing is a situation where there has been a huge increase in prices, particularly as a consequence of the pandemic, which has resulted in this high price. We are accountable. We are making sure that we are dealing with the situation and making the necessary changes in the economy and moving forward. And that has been enunciated, and we are following that. And I can tell you, even in the uh, current situation, we are, we are doing that, and we would do that. And by the end of March, we will announce a new program for the next nine months and thereafter, so that we have a clear plan that we are following, so that people also will know that that's the plan that Sri Lanka is following. In other stories, Sri Lanka has secured the third place among countries in the world engaged in successful vaccination programs. Meanwhile, Minister Kelia Rambukwela says that there is no need to have unnecessary fears regarding receiving the booster vaccine. A vaccination week is scheduled to be conducted till the 17th of this month. <laughs> Minister Kelly Rambukwela said that the Sri Lanka has come up to the third place among 194 countries in the world engaged in successful inoculation programs. The minister further said that they are marching silently to fulfill their goals. Administering of the Pfizer vaccine in the first stage in the COVID immunization program to children between the ages of 12 and 15 years was conducted successfully in schools throughout the island today as well. Under the COVID immunization program, so far doses have been inoculated on 34,367,331 Sri Lankans. Out of this number, 
16,053,476 persons have received the first dose. The number of persons who have received both doses in 13,863,992. The booster dose has been administered on 4,449,863 persons. 653 COVID-19 afflicted persons have been detected in the island today. 11,043 corona patients are continuously receiving treatment. 159 COVID-19 patients have been cured today. The total number of fully recovered patients is 567,519. The Director General of Health Services have confirmed 14 COVID-19 related deaths which have occurred yesterday. 11 of the fatalities were of the ages of 60 years and above. The remaining three victims were between the ages of 30 and 59 years. Meanwhile, the register of the Malvata chapter of the Siam Mahanikaye, Venerable Pahamune Sumangalathero, said at a meeting today that the Upasampada meritorious rituals, which were unable to be conducted in the past few years due to the situation prevailed, could commence from today subjected to proper health guidelines. Meanwhile, the Deputy Director General of Health Services, Dr. Hemant Herod, urges the public to receive their vaccines without any delay. He said that a week of vaccination has been declared by the Ministry of Health, encouraging the people to be inoculated against the COVID-19 outbreak. He made these remarks during a media briefing held today. Government has already declared a week of vaccination starting from yesterday and several activities have been started and in, we, the ministry and the regional authorities have intensified the vaccination program in their respective areas and therefore at this moment it's a great opportunity for anyone who has already not got the appropriate vaccination to get their vaccination. So therefore all citizens of this country who have not got their appropriate vaccine are requested to go to the nearest vaccination center and get their appropriate vaccination as soon as possible thereby you get yourself protected and you can contribute to the protection of the entire community now in more stories here at home a gas notification pertaining to the standards in gas gas cylinders and equipment was released today it has been issued according to the ministry of finance Hereafter, those who are hoping to import gas, gas cylinder and, equip and equipment should submit an application in this regard to the Sri Lanka Standards Institute. It is compulsory to receive the standardization certificate in order to clear the relevant items from the customs. Accordingly, permission is being granted to import liquid petroleum gas under the SLS 712 standardization. The SLS standard, uh, standard 1172 will become applicable for the importation of liquid petroleum gas for hose and assembling of hoses. The SLS standardization 1184 is required for installation of valves in liquid petroleum gas cylinders. The standardization for changing of equipment in pressure regulators and automated liquid petroleum gas is SLS 1180. The Ministry of Power says all that power cuts will not be conducted in any part of the island today. Additional Secretary to the Ministry, Sugat Dharmakirti, says that a discrepancy at a private power plant has been restored. Additional Secretary to the Ministry, Sugat Dharmakirti, said that power breakdown occurred at the Soft City Power Station in Kalanikasa yesterday has been rectified. Accordingly, it has become possible to add to the national grid a capacity of 163 megawatts of electricity generated to the station. As a result, a continuous power supply is guaranteed. He has also expressed hope on the possibility of engaging in repairing in the Norachole Power Station by the 20th and 21st of this month, resulting in stabilization in the system. Now, the Yativara Harasara ceremony to welcome the chief incumbent of the Sri Abhayarama Purana Vihare and the chief Sanganayaka of the Western Province, Venerable Murutta Tve Anandathera, who has been felicitated with the post of the Chancellor of the Colombo University, was held yesterday. Now, President Gotabe Rajapaksha and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha have presided over the event held at the Nelumpakuna Mahinda Rajapaksha Theatre. Now, the Maha Sangha, headed by the Anunayaka of the Malvatu chapter, Venerable Nyangoda Vijitasiri Thera, and the Anunayaka of the Askiriya chapter, Venerable Venerue Upali Thera, and clergymen of other religious denominations have also attended the occasion. Speeches were delivered on this occasion on the life vision of the Venerable Nayaka Thera. 
Speaker Mahinda Yapa Abewadana and other people's representatives including Governors, President's Senior Advisor Lalit Viratunga, Prime Minister's Secretary Garmini Senrat, Ministry Secretaries, Government Officials including nurses were also present. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha has recalled memories of Venerable Murutte Tweter visiting the Madhumulana after the election defeat in 2015. The Prime Minister has also remembered how the Mahanayaka Thera has requested him to take charge of the reconstruction of the country. The Prime Minister has also extended his gratitude to the Nayaka Thera for extending cooperation to engage in the activities from the Abhya Rama Vihara. He added that the Venerable Murutte Tve Ananda Thera had extended him immense support while he was in the opposition as well well as the times he held ministerial portfolios and the post of president. A three-member Colombo High Court bench has imposed death sentence on former Commission of Prisons Emil Ranjit Lamaheva today. He has been accused of killing eight prisoners in clash that had taken place at the Valakada prison in the year 2012. The court has acquitted from charges another accused in the case as the former police inspector Neomar Rangajeeva of the Police Anti-Narcotic Bureau. The bench was comprised of judges Gyan Kulatunga, Pradeep Hetiarachi and Manjula Tilakaratna. A group of officials of the Police Special Task Force had conducted an operation in the prison with the objective of apprehending illegal items in the possession of an inmate on the 9th of November 2012. During the operation, some inmates had attacked an arms depot and acquired firearms. The case had been filed by the Attorney General under 33 charges, including killing of eight inmates and engaged in conspiracy to kill. Now, Minister Kehali Rambukwala says that the aim of the government is to produce 70% of the medicinal requirement in the country itself. He was addressing a ceremony held at the Urban Development Authority today. Now, the event was conducted in connection with the signing of an agreement pertaining to the construction of a drugs manufacturing centre in Millevatta in Horana. Chairman of the State Pharmaceutical Corporation, Dr. Utpala Indrawansa, and Chairman of the Urban Development Authority, Major General Uday Nanakara, have signed the agreement. The pact was related to long-term leasing of a 64-acre land to the SPC by the Urban Development Authority. The factory is scheduled to engage in the manufacturing of anti-cancer drugs as well as orthopedic equipment. Minister Kehali Rambukwala said that Sri Lanka is a small country with a small economy. Sri Lanka feels the global economic pressure. The foreign income has been reduced to less than $30 million, which means that Sri Lanka has been deprived of 70% of its income. It is possible for any able person to govern the country when there are no serious problems. However, the efficiency of a government is tested under adverse conditions. The minister added that they have the self-confidence to overcome the temporary challenges. The government is able to resolve the disputes and move forward in the long run. Minister Johnston Fernando and Minister of Trade and Foreign Affairs in Hungary, Pieter Slato, have jointly presided over the inauguration of the construction in the flyover at the Kovula Junction. The overhead bridge is to be constructed in parallel to the 120 route from the Colombo to Horona. A four-lane roadway is also to be constructed in the lower level. The flyover construction would facilities travel from Kalubo Villa to Nugegoda as well. The road traffic will be controlled through automated light signaling. The length of the bridge is 297 meters and the width is 9.4 meters. The estimated cost is 2.65 billion rupees and it will be erected through financial assistance from Hungary. The work is scheduled to be completed within 22 months. In the meantime, the commander of the Sri Lanka Air Force, Air Marshal Sudarshan Patrana, says a large amount spent on aircraft maintenance was able to be saved. Now, the Air Force commander has made these remarks during a media briefing on the occasion of the launching of the 71st anniversary program at the Air Force headquarters this morning. Air Force Marshal Air Marshal Sudarshan Patirana said that the Air Force is engaged in daily activities to safeguard the coastal belt of the country. The aircraft being used in these operations are being maintained by the SLAF. The Air Marshal has recalled that in the past, Sri Lanka had to incur massive expenses to dispatch such aircraft abroad for maintenance. He added that, however, today Sri Lankan engineers and technicians are engaged in the maintenance of such aircraft locally. 
The Air Force commander further stated that SLAF helicopters are being deployed in peacekeeping duties of the United Nations. Accordingly, Sri Lanka has earned an income of more than $6 million through these operations. He added that the income has been credited to the Ministry of Finance. Well, that's a wrap of tonight's prime time news bulletin here at Rupo Hain Channel I. And until we meet again next time, do take care, stay safe, and good night.